A while back I did a video on how to make a DIY lineman's rope, also known as a positioning lanyard. The only change that I've made to this lineman's rope is I changed the termination to that carabiner to a cinching knot. And this is just a double fisherman's knot tied onto that carabiner. And it basically prevents that carabiner from sliding around and potentially getting side loaded. This is still that eight millimeter Petzl Vector uh, rescue cord, which is really hard to find now. And one of the challenges is for this Rope Man 2 ascender to really work, it needs to have a very particular rope sheath or else it'll just really tear it up and get it all fuzzy. And so one of the things I wanted to do with this video is kind of show an alternative using Rope Man 1 with a larger rope. So if you look at this lineman's rope right here, this is Samson Predator. It's an 11 millimeter rope. It's the same rope that is used for like the tree tether and lineman's ropes on the Arrow Hunter tree saddle. And again, you can see here just that double fisherman's termination on the carabiner itself. These are just uh, auto locking carabiners. So you have to be a little bit more careful with them to not make noise. You don't want to just let them snap but you basically, you would roll these things and then open the gate and then the gate automatically closes and you don't have to worry about doing kind of that screwing motion to be able to close that gate back up. So here's how you tie that double fisherman's termination out of the carabiner. You run the rope through the carabiner and then you take that tag end and you wrap it twice around the rope, working it the direction of the carabiner. And when you do that, you create an X. Then you just take the tag end and you slide it from the side of the carabiner to the side of the main line right underneath that X, just like that. And then you can pull that guy tight and you notice that on one side it looks like you got these two little parallel pieces of rope and on the other side you got something that looks like this. It looks a little bit like that X. And then you can actually tighten that thing down and it cinches right onto your carabiner. So that's how you'd make that termination. Now on the back side of that rope, we have the double fisherman's termination once again, but this one's tied just a little bit differently. So I'll go over how to tie that one real quick. So to create the stop or not, you want to give yourself plenty of rope to work with. Go ahead and wrap the tag end around the main line twice. Again, in such a way that it creates an X. And then you want to take that tag end and take it from the direction of the main line underneath the X out that direction. And then you just pull it tight. And you know it's done correctly when once again you look at it and you can see that on one side you got kind of that, those two ropes run in parallel and then on the other side you got that X. And you want to again give yourself plenty of tag end on the back side of that knot. And then since this is an 11 millimeter rope, technically you could use a Rope Man 1 or Rope Man 2. But if I'm using a rope that can handle both, I'm always going to lean toward the Rope Man 1. It seems to be a lot more friendly to various different kinds of ropes. The only time I would use a Rope Man 2 is if I wanted to use a smaller rope that was too small for the Rope Man 1. So to put that on the rope, you just open up the cam, slide it on the rope just like that, and then go ahead and take that carabiner, put it through the open end and you're done. That's it. Now you can pull that rope through one direction, but it won't go back the other direction unless you open up the cam. And then this Lyman's rope in this configuration is kind of my preferred way of using it. Uh, in fact, the only thing that I'll oftentimes change is instead of running this back carabiner, oftentimes I always have that thing clipped into the same side of my harness all the time. So I'll usually just skip that carabiner and tie this rope right into my harness just to eliminate, again, additional potential for any kind of metal noise. I like the 11 millimeter rope, even though it's a little bit bulkier, it's a little bit heavier than this eight millimeter stuff. It seems to work itself on the tree a little bit easier. So probably the number one reason that a lot of guys have moved towards a mechanical ascender, in this case, the Rope Man 1, is because it allows really easy and quick adjustment with one hand of that lineman's rope while you're going up the tree. But there are other options. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get that mechanical ascender. There are other methods that have been used within the tree culture, within the tree industry, 
that will allow you to use a standard rope based hitch and be able to still use them with one hand. So here's another option. This one is called the distal hitch or the distal hitch. I've also heard it called and essentially it's just a friction hitch that also has a tender on the back side. And this is what acts as kind of your second hand to be able to lift the hitch. So when you weight this thing, it tightens down on that rope and puts a bend in the main line and you can see that it kind of holds you there. So that's what prevents you from going backwards. Now, normally if you had just like a Prusik hitch, you would have to then grab that thing and then pull your line through to tighten it. But with this guy, what you can essentially do is as you pull this main line, this guy here, which is that chisel rope slider, actually opens up that hitch and allows the rope to pass through. So that's where you get your one-handed adjustability. And then again, when you weight it back down, that hitch cinches back down onto your main line. Now this component here by Shizzle is a piece of aluminum and it allows you to have this thing dressed nice and cleanly, but this can also be done with something as simple as a little D-ring and a piece of paracord, right? So it can be done very simply to be able to get this little piece of a tender to be able to lift your hitch. Now, I'll show you how to tie this guy. And it seems to work a little bit better with oval carabiners instead of a pear-shaped one like this, but I'll still be able to show you how to tie it regardless. So as is pretty much always the case, we're gonna use a smaller hitch cord than our main line. This is 11 millimeter. Once again, this is eight millimeter. And if you wanted this to be nice and tidy, you can actually buy ropes like this that come pre-spliced on both ends. So you don't have to worry about these knots. What I have on here is just these little fisherman knots, which are the exact same knots that we used to tie the carabiner onto the rope a little bit earlier in the video. But the length on this particular line is about 24 inches from tip to tip. So to tie this, what we're gonna do, and there's a couple different ways to do this, and if my video isn't clear, there's a bunch of other videos on YouTube. You can go to Animated Knots to show you how to tie this thing as well. But basically what I'm gonna do is take this hitch cord, go around the rope once, just like that, and then I'm gonna go up above And then I'm gonna take this end of it and go through this loop four times and have that rope come out the other side. So there we go, one, two, three, and I'm just gonna snug it a little bit closer so I got a little bit easier room to work with and then get that fourth one to go through. So there we go, just like that. So you can see how on the completed hitch, we got one loop coming off one side, the other loop coming off the other side. Now we can take that tender, whether it's a chisel rope slider or whether it's a micro pulley or whether it's something as simple as this. And then I'm gonna take the carabiner, go through one side, go through the tender, and then go through the other side, just like that. Now you can start to see why this would be a little bit more convenient with an oval shaped carabiner. But I'm gonna go and slide all of these guys down to this end. And now you're able to clip more easily into your harness. And again, just like with the other carabiners, you can use an auto locking carabiner for this component too. I found that on some ropes, they tend to not want to bite down very well. There we go, now I got it to bite down. Um, once you get it to bite down initially, it seems like you're in a pretty good spot, uh, but sometimes depending on which hitch cord you're using, which main line you're using, it can take a little bit of playing around with it to get it to actually bite down that initial time and get the rope uh, really straightened out and tightened down. But here now you can see, we get it to lock down, and then that's how we shorten it, lock down, Right, just like that. And then if you wanted to lengthen it, you could just kind of lean out away from the tree and allow yourself to fall back just like you would with uh, an ascender like a rope man. The only difference is instead of opening up the cam, you're just grabbing the top end of that hitch. So I've really tried to like this. I've used it quite a bit. I like the idea that it's 
very similar to stuff that's already being used in the tree industry. So that aspect of it's really nice. Uh, but what I keep finding myself is that I keep gravitating back towards something like this because I find it just a little bit easier to use. It's a little bit less finicky. I never have to worry about it not biting down like it did right there, right? Never have to worry about that. And it just is so much less bulky. So you can use either one. Obviously, if you wanna go this route, what I would recommend doing is buying one of those pre-spliced hitches so you don't have to worry about tying these knots, which add even more bulk. Obviously, cost-wise, if you go with a hitch, depending on which one you use, if you buy a pre-spliced one, they can get kind of spendy, like 20 to 30 bucks. But obviously this piece right here for a tender is not gonna cost you much at all. So you can definitely get by with this type of a system for less money than something like this. It's gonna come down to personal preference, whether or not you're more comfortable with using a rope-based hitch system, or if you're comfortable with using a mechanical-based system. The only negative thing I've ever seen in relation to the Ropeman 1 from a safety aspect is that because it uses these teeth on the cam to be able to stop itself on the rope, I've seen that in one article where they tested a pretty large shock load, it actually cut into the sheath of the rope, which of course is a fairly decent safety concern. But based on the numbers, you would have had to put yourself into a pretty precarious situation actually climbing a tree on a hunt to be able to get yourself into an opportunity where you could even have that kind of a shock load. So realistically, if you're using your Lyman's rope properly, you shouldn't ever get yourself into that kind of a scenario, but it's something that I wanted to point out and just make everybody aware of that you don't wanna be putting this thing into a situation where you could have a big shock load. Well, I hope you guys found this update video to be helpful and informative. Once again, the system that I'm using pretty much all the time now is this 11 millimeter Samson Predator. I start with roughly a 10 foot long piece of that. And I use one of the auto locking carabiners I got from Arrow Hunter and a Ropeman 1 Ascender. But if you're using a system that is more similar to what I made in the last video, the only thing I'd really change is that for that termination for the carabiner, I would use that cinching knot. And finally, I just wanted to kind of make everybody aware who wasn't already aware. I, obviously, if you're a, somebody who's working in the tree industry, you probably already knew about this, but maybe not so much for a lot of the hunters watching my videos. There are these rope-based systems, these friction hitches, that if used with a tender, such as this chisel or such as a micro pulley or something like this, you have options that are non-mechanical to be able to use your Lyman's rope or your positioning lanyard with one hand. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If I mispronounced anything or used the wrong terminology, again, let me know down in the comments. I'll have links to most of the stuff down in the description. I may not have a link for this particular rope because honestly, I can't even really find it online that much anymore. Uh, but something that would be very similar would be any kind of heat resistant Prusik cord. That's gonna be a good substitute for this particular rope that I used with this rope man too in that old video. But for the most part, everything else I'll be able to have links for in the description. And again, the Samson Predator is kind of my, my personal go-to for both my tether and my Lyman's belt now. So with that, thanks for watching.